So at Omni Local Business Network in Wimbledon, we have the infamous, amongst our community anyway, uh, Jonathan Hughes, who's going to give us a pitch platform. Jonathan, I'll give you till nine o'clock, if that's all right, mate. And uh, the floor's yours. Great. Thanks very much, John. And I know, I know you said uh, this is a pitch platform, so it's about your business. So to not talk about things like butterflies and scuba diving, but there is actually a moment that is about scuba diving in here. So there you go. So uh, great to be with you all. Um, Jonathan Hughes of wordsup.com. What do I do? I, I work with inspiring business owners to give them breakthroughs with their business. And I'm now going to uh, move to a little share screeny thing. Hang on. Okay, can you all yep. see that? Great. Okay, Jonathan Hughes, Creative Catalyst. What the heck is that? Well, hopefully you'll have more of an idea by the end of this presentation. One thing I invite you to do, um, as we go through this, if something resonates with you or piques your curiosity, do make a note because I'm going to cover quite a lot of ground. Uh, and it'd be great to have some, you know, some juicy questions at the end. So I'm curious about what you're curious about. So let's see. I'm a Pretty curious creature actually, so here we go. Okay, five things I'm gonna look at. Number one, a bit about me, not too much, so we can look at all the other interesting stuff. Two, four insights about the creative process that have kind of guided a lot of what I, I do for many years. A creative process that works, where I go through the four hats of the creative process, four creative projects I've loved, and then finally, who I'd love to work with. So I hope that all makes sense. So, so me in a nutshell, uh, that was me when I had hair. Uh, a long time ago. Um, from a very early age, words, language, lyrics, humour have always kind of fascinated me. Right, meet the parents, that's mum and dad. Dad, both my dad and my sister went to art school. Uh, me, I love to doodle. Um, and that's, yeah, that's my mum on the left. Um, that was a party they, party invite in the 60s. Mad Men. Uh, Mad Men was my dad's world. So my dad was all about advertising and it was kind of a world I fell into. And ever since I first did do that, I was thinking, yeah, but is this my world? What is my world? And I kind of follow my heart to some quite interesting places. And there is the scuba diving slide. When I, when I first went to scuba diving, one of the biggest things about it for me wasn't so much actually when I was in the water, it was when I came out and I looked and I saw, I'm sitting on the side of the, the, of the shore in Cairns, Australia. And I looked, was looking at this tree and I was thinking, crikey, you know, if I was underwater, I'd be able to swim up to the top of that tree and come back again. So it changed my sense of me. And what I love to do is, in my work, take people to a place where they see things with, with new eyes. Another thing I love to do, running, singing, meditating, all these things, singing maybe especially, take me to another place so I can return to my work refreshed. And that's what I love to do with other, with other people, is, is bring them to a, a place where they see their own work and their own business with fresh eyes. Eyes Wide Open was a 12-week, um, sorry, <laughs> three times. It was a four-week creative course I did last year, and there's some people on this, this call who did it. I've spent the last 25 years building creative solutions that really work. I want to spend the next 25 showing people how to do that, and Eyes Wide Open was my first foray, whatever you want to call it, uh, into doing that, working with people to give them that creative toolkit. Um, okay, four insights about the creative process. 89% of all creative solutions don't work. What? That's of the 18 billion spent on all forms of advertising and marketing. Says who? Says this fella, that's Dave Trott. He, he, his first agency, Gold Greenlee's Trott, an amazing ad agency, and it was voted the most creative agency in the world. So why don't they work? Because they skimp on the foundations. There's not enough context. There's not enough thinking before the building. Insight number two, we are all creative. Every one of you in this meeting, we are all creative. Birds are born to fly, fish are born to swim, Human beings, we are born to create. We turn thoughts into things. That's what we do, all of us. If you're in a, an urban setting, you look outside, everything you see apart from the trees and the sky, that started as an idea in someone's head. We're way more creative than we realize. Insight number three, creativity is like cooking. That's your hat, Darren, by the way. Creativity is like cooking. You can have the best chef in the world, but if he or she is cooking with stale ingredients, I'm sorry, it's going to taste like shit. So where... Does the fresh stuff come from? And that's something we really have to look at in the creative process. If you're cooking with stale ingredients, again, it's not going to be great. So you have to dig for the fresh stuff at the beginning. Insight number four, I love this. <laughs> the visitor sees more in a day than the native sees in a year. So how can you, how can each of us see the familiar with new eyes? It's so important. Most of us go through life in autopilot. 
right now, if you were, if you look around you, if you weren't sitting in your home, but if you were sitting in, I don't know, in Finland or New Zealand, you'd look around you with new eyes, you'd drink it in. How can you see the familiar with new eyes? Okay, here's a creative process that works. At the heart of a creative process, you could, you could say it's about identifying problems and then solving them. Figuring out what are the pennies that we need to make drop and then how do we make those pennies drop? And I carved this into four, four creative hats. And they're four hats of a scalable creative process that really works. So these four hats, starting number one, the thinking hat, strategy hat. This is where we get clear. Don't ask me to design a bridge. Tell me you want to cross the river. <laughs> I want a bridge, I want a bridge. But mate, look, you've got all these dinghies. In the same way, I want a website, I want a website. Hang on, mate, what, what is it you actually want to achieve? And what are the resources we've got to play with? Let's just take stock here. This is where we nail the intentions and we keep these in mind throughout the whole creative process. We size up the challenge, we map out the process. That's what we do. Hat number two, blob, 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 discovery hat. What is it that we have to cook with? What are the insights and in, yeah, insights and ideas and experiences that are in the head of your team, your clients and you? So this is where we get inspired, where we see things newly. What if your clients won't be inspired until you are? They won't be. So this is where we gather the insights, we unearth the gold dust, and we make fresh connections. Breakthrough insights lead to breakthrough outcomes. You're not gonna get a breakthrough outcome if you don't make time to gather those breakthrough insights. Hat number three, cat in the hat hat, conceptual. This is where we get creating, where we sequence the substance, we structure the solution, there is a method in my madness, and we refine the ideas, that's what we do. And now, <laughs> now we're ready to build. So often out there, people go, okay, here's the brief, let's start building. We need enough of those three things before we pull on, pull on the fourth hat. Uh, my favorite quote from Mary Poppins was, enough is as good as a feast. We just need to do enough digging to get clear and inspired before we start building. So now we pull on the fourth hat and we build and we get results where we turn heads, not just any heads, but we captivate, captivate the right people, get them spinning on their heels and we get on their wavelength. Where we change mindsets, some big pennies drop, then we can change behaviors and we realize intentions. So for example, well, I'm now gonna go through, to make sense of that slightly abstract four hats piece, I'm now gonna sort of demonstrate it with four projects that I've worked on, four, four creative challenges I've loved. Example number one, um, a really inspiring couple came to us. Um, her background was in branding, his background was in bikes, and they had this idea, kids bike exchange, a new way to keep, keep kids cycling. Why pay for a bike every time your child outgrows their last one? So those of you in the room with kids, let's say your first child has a nice little blue bike, then they get too big for it, so it goes in the garage. Then the next child comes along, they actually want a pink bike and they don't want that one in the garage. They outgrow that one, that then goes in the garage. So it becomes a bit of a costly process. So why not lease the bikes? It was a brilliant idea. And they had, you know, they had a good idea, but they didn't have such a good name. Kids Bike Exchange, it was okay but it was a bit of a mouthful. So we did a workshop with them. We said, yeah, how can you reduce it? And they said, well, we thought of that. We've reduced it to KBE. We said, yeah, KBE, that's like Knight of the British Empire. You look at words out there that are bikey words, BMX, that sounds more bikey. So why don't we make it KBX? And X is the heart of it. X is the exchange. It also meant when we did the, bike, the, the URL, it stopped being kids bikey exchange. It was kids bike exchange, it read better. But X is such a, it's the heart of what they offer. And it's such a simple, beautiful idea. You know, a child could get it. So when we started doing the graphics, there's a visual language here. So we use kids crossing their arms, doing star jumps on the website, a new way to keep, keep, keep kids cycling. And then we used it on, um, you know, little bolts for, uh, for bikes. And that was Doug, the husband half of the team in his workshop, KBX. So very happy with what we did. Example number two, I've been very blessed over the last, six, seven years to do four or five really quite big, major inspiring projects with St. Paul's Cathedral. One of them was the 350th anniversary of the Great Fire of London of 1666. It was actually September, 1666. And so they're briefed to us, we, we need a name for this exhibition, this commemoration. So all these four projects I'm going through, I worked on them with the same designer, Paul Warrington, who I love to work with. We work very much as a team. Two heads are very much better than one. So. What we like to do is we don't like to give clients just as some people in this call will know who've worked with me we don't like to give people just one option we like to give them some outtakes 
So we thought we'd give them an outtake, which we knew they wouldn't go with, Inferno 66. It actually sounds like a, you know, a, a sort of a movie of a burning building starring Nobby Stiles and Bobby Charlton. So we knew they wouldn't go with that. The, the name they went with was Out of the Fire, because like a phoenix, St Paul's arose out of the ashes. I mean, the Great Fire of London was the making of Wren, and it, in a way it was the making of London. So that was, that was the name we went with. But then we actually saw a problem that the client didn't. We said, well, okay, that's fine if you've got this, you've got this 12 month exhibition, but if you've got, if you've got a month, uh, sorry, if you've got an exhibition that's running for 12 months, say from April to, to March, people think, oh, I don't need to go until the 12th month. So we had two other challenges. How are we gonna attract visitors throughout the 12 months of the exhibition? And also how are we gonna create a spike of interest around the exact anniversary in September, because there were a lot of extra things they were doing in September and we needed to flag that up. So what we did was we carved the whole exhibition and campaign into, into three periods and each one had a different name and different color to it and each lasted four months. So the first one, the spark, July to August, 2016. The destruction of medieval St. Paul's started with a spark. So that was a poster that would be on the railings around St. Paul's and would also be in, in press and media elsewhere. Part two, the inferno. So this is when the fire happened in September. The stones of St. Paul's flew like grenades. And this was linked then to the activities they were doing for those four months, it re-inspired them. Part three, the phoenix. Out of the ashes, a new city emerged. So then that was the poster that was on the railings on the outside and in the press. And people thought, oh, I went to that first part, but I didn't go to this one. Oh, maybe it's gonna be different. And it was. So our ideas changed the activities that they did. And if you actually were to go to the crypt at St. Paul's now, go down onto the, the lower level, um, you'd see uh, still some of the, the work that we did uh, with Out of the Fire. That was an amazing model that they did uh, to bring the whole thing to life, Out of the Fire. Okay, example number three, Park Run. Many of you in this room, I, I expect, know about Park Run. It's an extraordinary thing. It's a phenomenon, really. Um, and it's actually starting again this Saturday, which is really good news in most, most places around the UK. Um, but it's a phenomenon. So it started in 2004 with just 13 runners, and three volunteers in Bushy Park. So Bushy Park, which is very close to me, is the home of, of Park Run. And then it just grew, it didn't just grow, it exploded year on year, pretty much doubled in size every year. There's now 3 million individual runs per year. So 2014, that was 10 years since it began. And my design mate, Paul, was one of two runners, two Park Runners, two volunteers who said, Let's celebrate this. Let's give back to Park Run. Let's create a celebration book, which they did. And he and these uh, journalists and photographers, they started pulling together this beautiful book, a celebration. And there were all these lovely images in it uh, of, the, the, yeah, of the different runners. The thing is, Paul came to me and said, mate, there's something in this that's missing. What do you think it is? And we went through it and there were two things that were missing. One was just real images of park and sky just to give that sense of place but the other thing what the other thing that was missing was there were some really lovely individual profiles but there's thousands and thousands of people that, that do park run and it's like how do we get their voices in so where we i don't know how many of you know bushy park but there's a lovely cafe in there the pheasantry with lovely glass um, windows all the way around walls all the way around after every park run in bushy park people all the runners flood to the pheasantry to have their after run cup of tea. So Paul and I thought, right, let's go there one Saturday. So we went there armed with post-its and pens. Um, and we just said to, we went to each table and we said, right, here you go. You know, we're creating this, this book for, to celebrate 10 years. Go, oh, wow, that's great, right. Just scribble down, what do you love about Park Run? And their quotes that came back to us, uh, we then used at the end of each chapter. And we, so we peppered each, uh, at the end of each chapter with these quotes, things like, you know, I love the fact that Park Run is inclusive to our four-legged friends. It, it brought a different depth to the whole book and it brought the whole thing to life. So um, the book was then shortlisted for Illustrated Book of the Year. So, oops, so that was that, Park Run. Um, finally, um, yeah, I've worked with some big clients, but some of the small ones have been fascinating as well. So there's a, a client I met through networking, um, Open Habitat. Uh, it was one of these projects where, I don't know if any of you have had this with your clients, where you start taking the brief and you actually wish you were the client because it's so inspiring, the product that they're offering. So 
some of you, let's say, have got really lovely gardens, but what you also want maybe is a home office. You want some space in the home garden to work, but you don't really want to lose the sunshine and everything else. So what these guys were offering, oops, sorry, is these high spec pergolas where at the push of a button, the ceiling rolls back. At another push of a button, the walls come down. So suddenly you're in your office in your garden, but you're in nature. There's no ceiling, no walls. And they had this great name for it already, Open Habitat. So what was our challenge? Our challenge was to create a logo just, to, just as good as their name, to distill a remarkable proposition and bring their stories to life. And for us, that came down to bringing together these two things. On the one hand, this extraordinary technology that was behind the high-spec pergolas, but also the promise of being able to experience nature. So you can have your home office without losing your garden. So our design rationale went through this. So that was the logo and we took, there's the inner pergola structure, there's the outer curves of nature and there's the space within the logo. And that logo, transforming outdoor spaces was the, was the strap line we gave them. And then that appeared on all their graphics, which Paul just came up with some beautiful imagery for them. So that was that. And there was a very big thank you. They were just, yeah, Frank, Frank Harrington, the, the, the MD was just through the roof, delighted. Um, so that was Open Habitat. And my creative partner, tcecreative.co.uk, you know, I'm not plugging just me here. I'm plugging Paul as well. He's the most extraordinary. I've worked with four really, really good designers over the last 25 years, and Paul's the best of the lot. So if you check out tcecreative.co.uk, you'll see what he does. So it doesn't always have to be work that he does with me. Um, so who would I love to work with? And why me? So three kinds of clients I love. Number one, inspiring clients looking through, looking for a breakthrough with their communications, especially someone where they've got a team and not just like a, an admin team, but a team that's really involved in the business. And they've got the story of the business in their heads, just a bit, a bit like with St. Paul's when I did six workshops with their tour guides. That would be a great client for me. Someone who's got a team that they want to involve in the creative process and also re-inspire and use their insights to build a great creative solution. So the people on the outside get the value of the company. Number two, designers and design agencies who don't just want a copywriter, that's what I used to be really, but they want a new edge, a new process for their, yeah, for their creativity. Oops, and so the third one, trainers, facilitators, educators who want to spread best creative practice. And I can bring a new energy and something to people's presentations. Why me? Uh, I've got over 25 years of experience building creative solutions that work for clients great and small. Accenture, I worked with them when they changed their name from um, Anderson Consulting to Accenture. Guinness, when they changed their logo, I did the branding guidelines for that. McDonald's, when they've been in the UK 25 years, I did a brochure for them. St Paul's, five or six amazing projects. But like I say, some of the little projects have been amazing too. And I, why the fish, <laughs> the little smiley fish? I don't just give clients a solution but I also give them lasting insights and a reusable toolkit. And I re-inspire the troops as well. Um, so Creative Breakfast is something I've been running. I'm gonna start again in September and I'm exploring, yeah, new ways to, to work with different kinds of clients. So this is a new website I'm gonna launch in September called Creative Mindset. So that's me, Jonathan Hughes, wordsup.com. Okay, and that is, that's a lot if I can just stop sharing.